What's up YouTube, Dar here from Zephyr Games, bringing you, as you can see before you, a pure Magic Spectre um, deck profile. Now this was requested by Lucario Gaming. Um, he's also requested a couple of other decks which I'll get around to as soon as I possibly can. So without further ado, I'm going to crack straight into this. Now, um, just to give you a quick brief overview of Magic Spectres, they're basically a pendulum based deck that aren't technically strong in both attacks and defense, however their ability to not be able to be targeted or destroyed by your opponent's card effects just makes them so much better, or, or when they first came out was one of the first kind of art types that got away with doing this. Um, so without further ado, we'll crack straight into it. So I'll zoom in a little bit so you guys can see it clearer. We go straight with triple um, Magic Spectre Bambuku or Magic Spectre Raccoon. Um, this is your searcher of the deck. It's a five scale. So the weird thing about Magic Spectres is, is they're all level threes and fours apart from uh, Magic Spectre Unicorn Kirin, which when we get to it, you'll see is a, a level six. So he doesn't fit within the scale reaches. So he's more of a tribute off. They're all spellcast type, uh, spellcast type, and they're all wind. So Rambuku is when it's normal or special summoned, um, you can add one Magic Spectre monster from your deck to your hand. Easy with that one. Uh, next up is Triple Magic Spectre Fox uh, QB. Um, this is your trap searcher. Um, so when this card is normal or special summoned, you can add one Magic Spectre trap card from your deck to your hand. Um, and you can obviously only use it once per turn. Next you play Triple Magic Spectre Crow Yata. Um, he searches out your spells. Again, really, really straightforward. Uh, and then you have Triple Magic Spectre Toad Ogama. He sets your spells and traps directly from deck. So it gets passed off like a mistake. Uh, triple Magic Spectre Cat uh, Nekomata. Uh, this card activates when it hits the field but doesn't revol resolve until the end phase. It is your searcher for everything. So you search out your Magic Spectre um, monsters or traps, which pretty much sets yourself up for the next turn. Uh, and then the one Magic Spectre Kirin. This card is the most OP card. Um, around in the Pendulum Era at this moment in time and he's more than likely going to get banned exactly what, what the OCG did to him. Um, now obviously it's not the end of the world for the Magic Spectre engine because like I said before, because he's a level 6 he doesn't fit within the scales um, and he is basically a Pendulum full board and then Tribute 1 off Kirin to protect and rebound your Bambukus. Um, so his effect is during either player's turn you can target one Pendulum monster you control uh, on the field, bounce it back to your hand and then bounce one of your opponent's monsters back to the hand. Um, he's a 2k attack, 2k defense, so he is the strongest one of them all. Um, but he's been, he's been used in so many different engines, so many different pendulum decks, he's pretty much a staple in most pendulum decks, that he got hit down to one and the chances are he's going to get banned. But he is your big beast, he is your boss card of the deck. So that's it for the monsters. Now on to the spells. So we play Triple Majesty's Pegasus. Now you can't search this card out because technically it's not a Magic Spectre card. Um, and we play the one Terraforming. Now um, the reason we play Magic Spectre Pegasus is because it gives you the ability to get multiple um, Magic Spectre effects off in the same turn and build up your extra deck. So all Magic Spectre monsters on the field gain 300 attack and defense. You can tribute one wind spell card to some monster. Um, special summon one level 4 or lower Magic Spectre monster from your deck can only use uh, this effect once per turn. So the idea is you would probably get pop your Bambuku, your Raccoon, bring out your cat in defense mode. The cat is now a 2100 defender. Um, the cat then gets a search in the end phase if you want. And if you have the ability to make scales, you can pendulum summon the uh, Raccoon back out. So we go with that. Uh, we play two Magic Spectre Sonics. Now this card, basically you target one Magic Spectre monster you control uh, until the end of the turn, its attack and defense become double its current attack and defense. Um, but any battle damage it inflicts is to your opponent is halved. Um, two Magic Spectre Cyclone. You tribute one wind cast, uh, one wind spell cast type monster, then target one monster your opponent controls and destroy it. It's quite ironic how the Magic Spectre cards can't be targeted um, or destroyed by card effects. Yet all their cards have to target. Uh, and then I play the one Magic Spectre Storm. Now not many people play this. But some of the cards out there that don't like being destroyed, or they get their effects of when they're destroyed, this is quite nice to bounce. Uh, triple MST for back row hate. Now, your monsters, because they're pendulums, you don't really want them going to the grave with stuff like Twin Twisters. Um, and the only things you really have to discard in this deck is probably like your Magic Spectre um, Pegasuses if you overload. Um, but your spells and traps you really want to keep, so you don't really want to be discarded to Twin Twisters. 
Um, now, run two tyres of the Brethren. You can run three of this. Um, I suppose if you did bump this up to three, you would then probably t um, consider taking out some MSTs for Twin Twisters for the pure fact that your tyres of the Brethren, you can only target um, your Toad, Crow, or Fox. So you've only got a limited amount of ability to use this. Now, the only good thing with the Tides of the Brethren that gives the deck, which it didn't have before, is Magic Spectres have the issue that if they can't get multiple Magic Spectres on the board um, and their back row for the tributes and stuff like that, for their effects to go off, they're kind of stuck. They need to have more monsters on board than they do back row. Um, and the only way, but your back row is there to protect you. So when we get into the tracks, we'll see how important it is. That's the one thing the Tides of the Brethren do for you. Now, um, sorry guys. Magic Spectres don't really mind going first, obviously they're a card down. However, if you go first, activate Tides of the Brethren, you then get the ability to, you'll get your Crow to search a spell, you'll get your Ogama to set a spell or trap, and then you'll get your uh, Kibi to add a trap to hand, so then you can set that away. So straight away you have three monsters on board, plus um, free back row. You then, if you have the ability, um, you then have the ability to lock down that board with those three cards and your back row. Um, all in turn. Um, obviously the added bonus is if your monsters are still on the field from the last turn or if you have a monster from your last turn you then get another normal summon of the raccoon or that's how you get into Kirin quickly. So you can easily bump this up to three and I'm, that's what I'm saying. If you bump this up to three um, because you can only theoretically activate the card maybe two, two times I think um, I suppose if you have one fox on board and then none of these in hand you could then activate it three times, um, but the chances of that is very, very slim. So it gives you a bit of discard for it if you do want to put in Twin Twisters. Uh, and then next up is the One Raigeki. This is a 41 card deck. Um, all the cards that are in red sleeves are for my Dark Lord deck, so it's just so I know to put them back. <laughs> um, but I have played this deck. I mean, I played Magic Fits when they first came out. I have tried them. I did take them to Nationals with um, an Odd Eyes engine just to make them a bit more competitive, but this is pure Magic Spectres. This is basically what they could do on their own, and they they are still really, really good. Uh, you play Triple Magic Spectres Tempest. Now, this is their own strike of the deck, um, and all it costs you is Tribune off a Wind Spellcaster, which is all your Magic Spectres, and the ability to get the scales again to then pendulum up the full board. Um, again, just helps out massively. Triple Tornado, this is a Banish, so this is to get around cards that want to go to the graveyard, your opponent's cards that want to hit the graveyard. Um, but you just, it targets the monsters and banishes them, gets rid of them, clears them, out of the way, done, dusted. Um, Two-dimensional barrier because this is this is the way it is at the moment. Um, you don't, ideally, you, these aren't as important in this deck. They're, they're a great card, but you want to be careful because if you're playing a Pendulum deck, you don't want to be negating your own monsters effect. So you really want to be stopping them against XYZs and stuff like that. Uh, I play one Magic Spectre Supercell because, again, it's searchable, but the ability to shuffle the five back in uh, five cards back into your deck and go again, um, especially with Tides of the Brethren, you can get through your monsters and your cards so quickly. And because it's an XYZ build, um, you, your materials are always going to the grave, so it lets you reshuffle all those back in and then draw off it in plus. It's only at one because... You very, very rarely use it. It's just if the game is elongated or if you've burnt through a lot of your back row, um, like I said with Tides of the Brethren, just to stop your opponent going off, this then gives you the ability to bring it all back and get that extra draw. Uh, and then the one Solemn Warning, because, you know, there's very few decks that don't play Solemn Warning, and the only decks that don't play Solemn Warning are those that can OTK really, really, like, consistently, or... Um, they don't, yeah, they just win the game quick enough without having to stop your opponent. But I, I personally think warning should be in at least 99.99% of decks. Right, now onto the extra deck. Now, the extra deck is only 11 cards. Now, I'll explain it when I go through it because the other four, again, is down to you guys. I keep knocking the camera, so I do apologise. The other four down to you guys. Now, there are some suggestions that I'll make as I go through it because, like I said, with the Magic Spectre engine, they're more of a we'll sit and wait and use our back row to hurt you. So they do scrub out really, really badly to stuff like Twin Twisters um, because they're built on the back row. And 9 times out of 10, if you're setting with Ogama, people know what you're setting already. So anyway, Double Lightning to Jewelry because I love this card in this deck. Um, it's nice that it's not generic. If this card was a generic rank 4, um, we wouldn't be seeing it. Um, but definitely at 2, because your monsters are wind monsters, 
the bounce effects is second to none. Uh, double Digaster Emerald because if you do bounce through your deck so quickly and putting cards into your graveyard um, and then you go into many XYZs which you don't really want to do but just in case you do uh, this lets you get the draw back and so on. Now uh, another advice you could bump up Castell but like I said with Magic Spetses you don't want to be going into your extra deck unless you absolutely have to or unless you've already got the ability to shuffle your cards back from the graveyard. Uh, one Gaga Gar Cowboy, one Diamond Die Wolf. Uh, one Abyss Dweller, so they're all pretty standard, straightforward. Uh, one Perform Mage Trapeze Magician, because I love this card. <laughs> I love this card so much. I mean, if if your cards... So let's put it this way. If you have an Ogama on field and you activate um, Sonics to double its attack, let Ogama attack twice, you're going to pop it anyway. That's it. Or you let him attack twice, clear some of your opponent's monsters, and then you can activate the spell, the, the quick play spells that will either pop it and pop a monster's card, or pop it and send it back anyway. So you've got away with most of the effects for pretty much free. Uh, and then the last two cards is Totem Birds. You can easily bump this up if you wanted to because you've got the free cats and the free bambukus. Um, and then you've got your Super Quantum Mecha Beast Grand Pulse. Um, so yeah, with the four spaces, it's basically you, down to your choice to whether you want to bump some of these up to uh, twos or whether you would like to add in some more stuff like uh, Kogorian Knight, I'll never get his name right and I do apologise, the level 4 that when a, a spell or, yeah, when a spell or is activated that targets, you can redirect it to an appropriate target. I think that's it, that was just off the top of my head, so I do apologise if I got that, the, the wording wrong, but the kind of aspect is there, it kind of redirects the target. Um, and then you can play other rank 4s, rank 3s if you wanted to um, put some more in there. But like I said, the Magic Spectre engine really just wants to sit on their own back row. Um, it, it's, an, it's an annoyance for your opponent because car, the amount of cards like Regeki, Dark Holes, stuff to clear boards. So those easy clear boards and go for game just don't exist at the moment. Like um, They don't affect the Magic Spectre engine or the Magic Spectre um, core, which is why... Magic Spectres had been darted around in certain decks and why you see Bambukus and Kirins in Metaphos these days. Um, but yeah, this, this is just a quick, um, little low-down, pure Magic Spectre build. Now, like I said before, because Magic Spectre is an engine, it can be put in many other decks and you can mix other decks with this. Like I said before, there's been a Performer Power, there's been an Odd Eyes, there's been Metaphos that have done it. Um, pretty much any Pendulum Scale um, that wants to search out Kirin have a card that can protect itself and search itself. So Raccoon can search itself. I mean, that's pretty awesome as in itself. Like nine times out of ten, they said you can't add themselves, but Raccoon can do that. So it makes sure that you're always plusing. You're always going to have that card in hand if you absolutely need to. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share. Give us a big thumbs up on the video. Uh, appreciate all your support, guys. And again. If you like Lucario Gaming, you want to see some deck profiles, whether you want them pure, whether you want them to, you want to see our takes on it, um, Joe will be more than happy to put some uh, Frankenstein decks for you together. Um, we'll test them out and let you know how they do. Um, but then if there's any deck profiles you're like, I haven't seen this for a while, I would like to see how it's matured, how it's changed, anything like that, just let us know and by all means we'll try and get it out there for you guys. So thanks everyone and as always, happy dawning. If you like that video, why not check out our other videos available. We've got more deck profiles, pack openings, and of course duels. And don't forget to click on the most important button of all, that subscribe button, right in the bottom left hand corner.